Linda to call tonight. Are you guys excited? I'm so excited. Now we're going to stand and do our favourite thing as Islanders. We're going to stand up and we're going to sing together. We're going to worship our awesome God. Isn't He an awesome God? Feel free to lift your hands, to clap your hands, to dance. All things that Samoans and Islanders like to do.
we're going to slow it down a bit. So this song I'm going to sing. In Samoa, it says Fafitai. It's a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving to God. From an island perspective and grew up in the island where you woke up in the morning, that there's nothing. But the one thing, when, when Christianity took over Samoa, the one thing we will always encourage and will always encourage the next generation, with nothing, we always have God. Amen? So why don't we all lift up our hearts in admiration to the Almighty God that we serve tonight and glorify Him for what He's done in our lives. Fa'afeta Oh, I am. 
language we sing or how what language we speak, God understands it all. You believe that with me today, yeah? So right now, we're going to enter into a time of free worship. And I want to encourage you to just worship Him in whatever language that you feel like singing, yeah? See the out of the key to the kind. There's no one like you. We give you praise. We give you praise, Jesus.
Absolutely awesome. Can I have the... Can I have the... No, in your pocket. Wow. I bring you the notices on behalf of our Aotearoa New Zealand people here in this church. It's absolutely awesome. So, kia ora. So, when I say kia ora, you say kia ora. So, kia ora. Awesome. Wow, well, like I said, I'm here to bring the notices today. Um, we have the new Turning Point reading plans, which are out now. If you don't have one yet, please raise your hand and someone, some of the ushers will be there to give one to you. Uh, next Sunday, here at the church, we have our Resonance Music Open Day. 
Now, if you are interested, as Pastor Norma was saying this morning, if you're interested in music, singing, playing guitars, instruments, knowing what goes behind the scenes here, please come along. I personally want to talk to uh, the mature age men and women in our church. I'm kind of one of the older ones in that is really blessed to be walking alongside and journeying with these amazing group of people on this worship team. So I seriously want to encourage you as well. You know, we can partnership really well with these young people and we have a lot to learn from these, these young ones as well. So I want to encourage you, anyone, young, old, medium, whatever, please come along. We welcome you. You'll get a chance to absolutely meet all this great team and really be able to sit down and talk with them and say, well, what really does go behind the scenes, you know? So I'm encouraging you. We also have our Stripes and Splat group starting up next week. Yay! I know our youth leaders, our group leaders are excited for this term. So there's lots going to be going on. So please, that's starting up next week. We also have our unsafe schools meeting this Thursday, and I know Pastor Norma spoke extensively about this this morning, so I'm encouraging you, church, please be there. If we want to have some influence and encouraging positive things to our children and to ensure that they are being taught the right thing in a godly manner, you need to be there. Thank you. I'm so sorry, my mistake. I forgot to introduce you to, our, introduce you to Udi, who's from the Cook Islands, who's going to bring tithes and offerings. God is good. All and all the time. God is good. Oh, not too bad. Let's have an island feel in the house. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Thank you. Uh, just looking at the front, this. These guys are ready to, to do their thing. But before that, I just want to bring a word of encouragement. It's time of um, giving. And uh, I'm pretty sure that we heard this scripture over and over. But tonight, and I want to, God want to remind us in Malachi chapter 3. You know, I love this scripture. You know how the Bible describes that when we give to God, God will also give to us. Amen. You know, God want to bless each and every one of us tonight. You know, as the Bible said that when we give to God, you know, we will open up the floodgates of heaven and blessing of the blessing and of the blessing and will be given to you. But tonight, I just want to just write down in verse 10, this little line there says, try it, put me to the test. Your crop will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. You know, tonight, you know, that put God to test. The Bible say, you know, many times that we, you know, we, we want to follow what other people, you know, they're blessing of. They've done it. Ah, I think I might do it as well. But, you know, the Bible make it clear tonight. Let put God to test tonight. You know, when we stretch our faith and, and believe, you know, whatever we sow, into the kingdom of God and whatever we sow, you know, into the bag tonight, you know, we believe for greater things. The Bible says that not only that, you know, we, it, a lot of things that the Bible says that it's going to take place in our life. You know, that, you know, the, the Bible says that when we put God to test, you will, uh, you will, your crops will be abundant for I will guard them all insects and diseases. You know, God will, uh, you know, will rebuke the devil. You know, that's a wonderful thing. You know, that's the power of giving. When we give to God, you know, God will rebuke the devil for us. Isn't that wonderful? You know, not only that we, we see uh, food coming on the tables and, you know, people are, you know, coming along and, you know, bless us with, with you know, with, with material stuff. But the Bible also declared tonight that, you know, God will uh, protect us from insects. You know, God will rebuke the devil for us tonight. Amen. Are we ready to give to God? Are we ready? I can't hear you. Yes. Are we all ready to give it to God tonight? Yes. You know, at turning points, we, we bring our tights to the front and our tight boxes are, you know, on the side here. And, uh, and also tonight, our, also the offering bag will be passed around. Our offering tonight will be going towards uh, uh, its unsafe school. Uh, 
There is a big rally that is taking place, I think, next Saturday. And, uh, and we are supporting this, this, uh, this is for good cause and, uh, and it need a lot of flies that we print out. So this off our offering tonight is going towards that, that we need to print out you know, up to 10,000 uh, uh, pamphlet uh, brochures to be handed out so we can all, uh, you know, go against the, uh, you know, to support this uh, unsafe school uh, that is happening in, in our country right now. Amen? Amen. Well, before we give tonight, let us bow our heads and, and believe that in a God water, open the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing. Let us pray. Father, tonight we want, want to thank you, Lord, for the word that you have um, speaking to our life tonight. Father, as your word said, that when we give to you, that you will also give to us, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, and also our, our giving tonight, Lord, that will go to a, a good purpose tonight is to, to build your, your kingdom and to, to, to do your work, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. As we, as we before we give tonight, we're going to minister through a song, and uh, then you can bring all your tithes to the and offering bags will be passed around. Amen. Amen. in the house you know where we come from we love worship we love our music but tonight we're gonna show you an island field in the house tonight is that all right let's have an island field
going. Good. Oh, okay. It's all right. Food's coming later. We're going to be good, yeah? We're going to get through. How was that worship? How's everyone feeling? Feeling good? I'm feeling awesome. My name is Gloria and I'm going to be your MC t- for tonight. Welcome again. <laughs> Okay, so we're so excited to be representing our home nations. As you may have seen in the video, we had plenty of islands. There's lots, I I wouldn't put a number, I don't know the number to it. But there are many, many, many different countries in the Pacific Island region. But tonight, within our church turning point, we've got mainly three islands. So let's say, hey, let's invite all the islanders. You guys can say it after me. Let's invite all the islanders. (laughs) So that... So that next time we'll have 20 islanders up here, yeah? 20 different islands, yeah? 20, 30, 40? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling up. Let's go, let's go, yeah? Okay, so there's three things that you should know about our culture. These three words pretty much sum up all of our culture, all of islander culture. I think you might have heard my sister say this before, but everyone say faith, family, and food. That's us. Let's go home now. No. <laughs> So as I said before, we're going to rep- be representing three different countries, maybe even four if you're really lucky. So first up, we're going to have our Maori family, and it's going to be so awesome because we're going to be telling you about our history, about how the missionaries came to our islands, and how um, the gospel was spread through our islands. So let's just welcome up May. I think she said in her notices before, to say hello, we say kia ora. Oh, that's a bit louder. Kia ora. Let's go, May. That was absolutely awesome. Kia ora koutou katoa. The Church Missionary Society began in London in 1799 when a group of Anglicans decided that the Christian gospel should be preached around the world. There were very few Europeans in New- living in New Zealand at that time. In December 1814, The first missionaries arrived in the Bay of Islands, escorted by the chaplain to the prison colony of New South Wales, Samuel Marsden. Marsden believed Māori were perfect candidates for conversion as they had grasped the benefits of trade, a key aspect in terms of accepting European ideals and beliefs. He deemed the natives of New Zealand to be far advanced in civilization and felt they were prepared to receive the knowledge of Christianity more than any other native nation he had seen. Missionaries traveled widely on foot and on horseback to preach to the Maori. Mission stations were established uh, throughout the country and missionaries became trusted peacemakers during the musket wars between tribes. Many turned to the Christian faith. When some chiefs converted to Christianity, their whole tribe would become Christians, and amen to that. As missionaries, they would have encountered the many traditions within the Māori culture. Our traditional greeting, known as the Hongi, which is done by two people, briefly pressing noses and foreheads together at the same time. During the Hongi, the ha, or the breath of life, is exchanged between the two people. The sharing of the breath of life can can be compared to both parties' souls intermingling together. So our Hongi is definitely a little more interesting compared to a handshake. (laughs) Um, Our moko, or traditional Maori uh, tattooing, often on the face, is a taonga, which is a treasure, for which the purpose and applications are and continues ancestral tribal messages specific to the person, including genealogy, knowledge, and social standing. Clothing, clothing adornment, and even hairstyle showed a lot of, about a person's status and could enhance mana, which is the authority, power, or prestige. Our traditional costume modelled by our Atahua Kōtiro Meriana, who is wearing the pupu, hand-woven and made of harakeke, which is New Zealand flax, using weft twining techniques, which was quite often passed down 
within families. The bodice is designed and hand woven to the desired shape or pattern as you see displayed here. Our korowai, our kete, we do have a handbag also, is made up of various kinds of bird feathers as you see right there. So tonight we are going to perform a poi, which was originally used by Māori to increase their flexibility and strength in their hands and arms as well as improving coordination. Wahine, which is women, dancers perform the Māori poi using balls attached to short or long string through a variety of rhythmical and geometric patterns. So it's been 40 years since the last time I picked up a poi and also, <laughs> so we're going to do our best to perform tonight. So we hope you enjoy our item and uh, please just, we'd, we'd love some encouragement if you don't mind. <laughs> Was that? And it gets better. It's going to be great. Okay, so the next one we have is Samoa. We're going to go all the way to Samoa. And in Samoa, we say Talofa. Oh, we can say it better. Talofa. And that means hello, greetings. And I'm going to invite my mom, give her a clap as she comes up to our reading. not straight. Oh, anyway, welcome to tonight. So, from Samoa, Talo Falava. Before Christianity, many people thought Samoa was a godless people. However, the Samoan people worshipped many gods. People thought they were godless because Samoan people didn't set up idols or physical presentation of their gods. So Samoan had a strong foundation in religion and had a firm belief in a higher being, but they didn't know them, just like uh, what it says in the Bible. 
Before the first European missionary arrived to Samoa, Christianity had already reached the shore of Samoa. The Samoans and other islanders such as Tongan, Fijians and the Cook Islands used to travel from one island to another island by canoe or what we call in Samoa, Va'alu or long boat. <clears throat> Through these travels, the Samoans who went to Tongan came back as Baptist Wesleyan, Methodist. So Christianity was brought into the country by the Samoans themselves through contact with neighboring um, islands that had already accepted Christianity. Amen? However, much of Christianity in Samoa is credited to the missionary Reverend John Williams. John Williams was an English missionary, active in the South Pacific, born near London, England. He was trained as a foundry, uh, foundry worker and mechanic. He was the first English missionary in Samoa and ever since Reverend John Williams came in 1830. Samoans has taken Christianity very seriously. Many Samoan missionaries have gone on to the converts, the rest to converts the residents of the many other island groups like Tuvalu, the Solomon Islands, and Papua New Guinea. Every Samoan banknote bears a radiant cross and the slogan, Fa'availea Tua Samoa, which means Samoa is founded on God. Amen. The first printing press was set up through the missionaries' work in 80, 1839, making it only the second in the whole Pacific region. And in 1855, the whole Holy Bible was translated into the Samoan language, which obviously helped spread the gospel to everyone. Amen. How good was that? One of the most highly valued Samoan attitudes, Samoan attitudes is respect. And these guys are going to demonstrate this for you. The respect between the village chief and the spiritual leader or the pastor. Every gathering or feast celebrations, the pastor will serve first with the best of every different food that is provided. The pastor's family will then give him the first of everything that the locals provide or have. Oh, oh Pastor Fion, you're not going to Samoa now. <laughs> the respect between the elderly parents the parents and the children. Every meal time, the children will sit down and respectfully call their elderly and, all, and their parents to come to eat. Then they sit there waiting for them to finish eating and hoping that there'll be some leftover and then provide them with the bowl of water and tea towel to wash and dry their hands with. So to date, these values are still applying to the daily living of Samoan, which if you come to my house, the boys will demonstrate them for you. So that's not an invitation, eh? <laughs> Here are some common words in the Samoan language. To say please, to say goodbye, to say goodbye, to say I'm hungry, to say I'm hungry, to say please, to say thank you, to say thank you, to say please, thank you. So one of the most common way of expressing our feeling and hearts of gratitude is through dancing or Siva Samoa. So right now, our very own Kiwi Samoan porn group will express our hearts of thanksgiving through dancing in a Samoan song. They will be dancing in a Samoan song called Tala Mailelangi, which is, means God, a Samoan is founded on God and to God, the Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth will be glorified in everything we do. So if you are,
Wasn't that amazing? <laughs> awesome. So where do you think we're going to go to now? The cookies. That's it. We're going to the Cook Islands. This one is extra special because we're going to have the Cook Islands and a little bit of Fijian. Someone's excited. So to say hello in the Cook Islands, we say kia ora na. And to say hello in, the Fij in Fiji, we say bula vinaka. I'm sorry if I butchered that for all my island friends out there. I live in Australia. Thank you. Let's invite Pira. Kia ora, everybody. And you say, Kia ora. Okay, we're going to share about the gospel that came to the Cook Islands. In 1821, October the 26th, English missionary John Williams and Tahitian translator Papahe had landed on the shores of the island of Tutaki. Give them a hand. They're doing a good work for the Lord. Before the arrival of Christianity in Atutaki, there was a big tribal battle on the island known as the Battle of Vauvauka. It was during this battle that a great warrior, Tipaki, was wounded by a spear embedded in his body. So when John William and Papa here arrived to spread the Christian message, they were also able to remove the splint from inside Tapaki's body, saving him from gangrene and severe infection, making Tapaki one of the first people who accepted Christianity to the island. And then from Atutaki, the gospel spread to the Ngapu Toro Islands, Achu, Moke, Mitiaro, before finally finding the island of Rarotonga. Where's all the Rarotongas in the house? Which is the capital of the Cook Islands today. Before the good news was brought to the islands, a man named Tika Kite Ope had a, had a vision of the white tropic bird Rakoya, which would fly out of the darkness to feed on the Ngātai flower. Tika Kite Ope interpreted his vision to mean that there would come a time an all-powerful God would arrive, a, t a God so powerful that the ocean would be turbulent, the earth would quake and the mountains shudder. The arrival of this new God would bring the Cook Islands people out of the darkness they had been living in for so long and into the light. Although people had thought Tika Kiteope crazy and did not believe him, his vision had come true when Williams and Papahe had landed on the beautiful shores of the islands. Okay, shake the missionary's hand. He just got the good news. Generations to follow were taught to live by the laws of the Bible. And so every year, to this day, us Cook Islanders, we celebrate Gospel Day on the 26th of October, remembering how the words of the Gospel became like the sweet nectar of the Ngātai flower, sweet and fulfilling nourishment to the souls of our people. The Cook Islands is made up of 15 different islands divided into the Northern Group and also the Southern Group Islands, each of them having their own spoken dialect, but the main known language is Cook Island Māori. The Cook Islands is most famous for its swaying, da swaying dance and acapella hymns that Imini Tuki within our mother churches. And also it's black pearls harvested in Manihiki. Where's all the Manihikis in the house? Woo! However, guys, although me and my nieces here represented are from the Cook Islands and these four girls are also half Samoan. In honor of our Fijian, cousins, our niece and nephew, we have chosen to represent them with the Christian praise dance from Fiji. Because the truth is guys, us islanders, we are a fruit salad of mixed cultures and God is the father of all nations. So please enjoy and God bless. Vinaka!
Why don't we give another clap for all those items? Okay, we're coming around to the best part of the night just about now, but before we go on, I just want to say a little story about myself. I am Samoan. My background is Samoan. I was born in New Zealand and we moved to Australia when I was nine. On my ninth birthday, actually. Fun fact. Anyways, um, it's been hard growing up in Australia because a lot of our families over in New Zealand, over in Samoa, we didn't really get to grow up in the culture and just immersed in the culture of Samoan culture. Culture, culture. Let me just say it again. Culture, yeah. <laughs> so we didn't really grow up knowing these dances and knowing all the words. I'm not very fluent in Samoan. It's only been the last few years my sisters had their wedding. We've gone through a lot of 21st. And in those celebrations, you have to know how to siva. You have to entertain your family, your friends that you, bring, that you are bringing. So we have been, we just, at first, we just went along with it. And we looked up all these videos on YouTube. And honestly, I always thought of my culture like, oh, they're a bit weird. And I don't really understand what's going on. But in these last few years that I've been able to really learn and I've really got along with my cousins. They've been coming over. We've been going over there and back and forth. It's been amazing and it's just been a real eye-opener. I never ever looked at my culture, at my family, at my background, at my history this way in a way that God made, God made me to be Samoan and that wasn't a mistake. That was perfect for me, me being loud and crazy and a little bit controlling me. That's me. And I love being Samoan. I love being Kiwi. A little bit Kiwi. I'm not that much Kiwi. And I love being Australian. So I really love these nights that we get to come and represent our culture. Now I'm going to invite my best friend, my sister. She's the best in the whole entire world. And you guys are going to have an awesome time. For her name's Sieni, not for. Sieni Elia, Pastor Sieni Elia. And she's going to preach the word tonight. Give her a clap. Good evening, everyone. It's so good to see you. Why don't you turn to the person to your left and say, Talofa. And then turn to the person to your right and say, Kiora, as they tell it to their person to the right. And then to the other person behind you, say, Kiorana. And then turn back to me and you can say, Bula, Bula Vinaka. Ah. You know, um, Culture is a pretty special thing. Now, you know, uh, some of you might be asking, you know, we haven't seen her dance yet, okay? And maybe when you see me dance, you might question my Pacific Island heritage. But my blood will not betray you. I am full Samoan. My father's name is Samuelu Elia, which is a Samoan name. He even has a Samoan title, which I'll get him to tell you. Um, and my mother's name is Tofinga Elia as well, another Samoan name. My name, in fact, is Samoan, although my mom says it has Tongan roots. Anyhow, tonight I wanted to talk about revival culture. Tonight has been really cool because my family has already shown you, my whole Islander family, they've already shown you a lot about when the missionaries first visited their different countries and the kind of reception that they received in each place. Now, the impact that missionaries had in Samoa went far. This, as you can see, there are a lot of hyperlinks there. Um, so this has been copied from Wikipedia, who I'm sure copied it from somewhere else. Um, but basically, in Samoa itself, within a few years of the missionaries arriving in Samoa, pretty much the whole nation converted to Christianity. Uh, that's probably after some of them were tempted to eat the missionaries. A lot of Pacific Islanders, and I know it's not just Islanders, I know it's other countries, including um, maybe some of the Africans, maybe some of the other um, Europeans. Before they knew Jesus, there wasn't really a value in human life. And so they had these weird rituals, which included cannibalism and other things, right? However, when the missionaries arrived in Samoa, huge numbers of people converted to Christianity because they were ready for something greater. They were ready for something better. Um, it says here, this is from the um, London Missionary Society page on Wikipedia, that they got so excited with the gospel that they were ready to pack up their stuff 
and go to other nations. I just want to read from the bottom of that slide. It says, since then, Samoans continue to take the gospel message to other Pacific islands. And it lists the islands. Many of these early Samoan missionaries never returned home. They occupy many of the unnamed and unmarked graves on islands throughout the Pacific. By the 1980s, Samoan missionaries could be found in Africa, evangelizing on the streets of London and to remote villages in Jamaica. How's that for a heritage, huh? You know, this is something that I personally have as part of my bloodline, but also as part of my Christian identity. In 2011, I was the first of my sisters to visit PNG, and while I was over in Papua New Guinea, um, they were interested in this islander who came to another island from Australia, of all places. And, they, um, and we were sitting down at dinner. I still remember this moment with um, Pastor, was it Pastor David? John. John Baroga? Yes. Out in Medang, and we were sitting down, and he said, you know, missionaries from Samoa came to PNG. And I said, what? Yes, they came to Kaka Island. There is a village in Kaka Island that is called Samoa. And they still sing Samoan language hymns. And the very first missionaries that arrived there, in fact, were actually killed. There were Samoan missionaries on Kaka Island, and their heritage is there now. Now they even speak their language. How cool is that? Early missionaries were largely responsible for health care in the Pacific Islands when they arrived, um, new measures of education. Like I said earlier, culture shift. They turned away from idols, cannibalism, and other ritualistic practices. And a folk, there was a central focus on God because the leaders who were impacted by the missionaries, they saw healings. They saw their lives change because of what was being taught. And so they started implementing devotional practices. I was able to witness this when I went to Samoa myself. In some of the villages, even to this day, maybe not as many um, as before, but they would stop everything at 6 p.m. because that's what's called local time. Say local. Local is the Samoan word for church. Local is actually also the pidgin word for church in PNG because that's how far the missionaries got to those days. Um, so everyone would sit down for devotion, they would sing hymns, and then they would recite verses, and then they'll spend prayer time. There will be regular fasting happened, uh, happening, and also curfews to keep their young people safe at night. Um, also, just like Australia back in the early days, businesses didn't run on Sundays. But how about now, right? What about when we go to the islands now? I said a bit earlier that not as many villages practice local time where they stop everything at 6 p.m. Because the expectation now is that individual families do it. But not just that, since the impact of globalization and Facebook and media and different cultures arriving in Samoa, different cultures arriving in many islands, I presume as well, there are many different influences on the country on the country now as well as Australia you know when the good news when the gospel reached Australia I believe Australia was changed so now we need a culture that goes deeper than our own personal culture now is the time for a revival culture now is the time for a kingdom culture the reason why my Samoan family is here at Turning Point, a multicultural church, is because we understand that living in Australia, our Samoan culture, as amazing and as important it is, it's not enough to sustain us in Australia. Now's the time for us to come together as Christians and live a culture that outlasts our own personal cultures, that outlasts our own bloodline, right? So I want to read to you a story from Joshua. Now, Joshua chapter 24. I love the Bible because the Bible has lots of stories about how people interacted with God. Um, and that's our story too. Um, so in Joshua chapter 4, 24, Joshua, he was the judge of Israel, the leader in Israel at the time. He took on after Moses. Who knows Moses? Yep, great man of God he was. Joshua took over after him and he saw lots of success 
in obtaining the land of Canaan, which became the land of the Israelites for a time. Um, Joshua assembles everyone together at she uh, Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, officials, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country of Seir to Esau, but Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there, and I brought you out. When I brought your people out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea, but they cried out to the Lord for help. I put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. Then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them from before you, and you took possession of their land. When Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balaam, of son of Beor, to put a curse on you. But I would not listen to Balaam, so he blessed you again, and again I delivered you out of his hand. Then talks about how they crossed from Jordan to Jericho. Now, at the end of Joshua's story, he says this in verse 14. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day who you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. The story goes on. Then the people of Israel answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord, to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out from Egypt, from the land of slavery, and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people, and there at Shechem, he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. He took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. See, he said to the people, this stone will be a witness against us. It has heard all the words the Lord has said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. Then Joshua dismissed the people, each to their own inheritance. Now I love that story because it covers so many different aspects of what we are to do to make sure our culture remains a revival culture, right? The Israelites, they saw God do amazing things, some things that we haven't yet seen him do in our generation, right? But yet, even before Joshua died, he knew that some of them had been serving false gods. He knew that some of them were starting to do the same things that other, um, other people around them were doing, which weren't godly, which they hadn't been taught through the Ten Commandments and through their history. So Joshua taught them to recognize that God had done a good work in their life. 
that God had done good things in their history, that the whole reason they are where they are today is because of what God has done. You know, for a revival culture to be sustainable, we have to recognize that God is a good God and that He has done good things in our lives. We have to celebrate the great things that God has done in our lives. And that's what I love about coming to church because it's a celebration every single week about what God has done in our life. For a revival culture to be sustainable, we have to remember God and remember the good things He has done for us. We need to remember good things and commit them to our memory. Who loves photo albums? I love photo albums. Photo albums are used to preserve the mem great memories that we have had. Our Bible is even better than a photo album because it carries with it the Holy Spirit of God right we can use different things to commit god's word and god's goodness to us to our memory for a revival culture to be sustainable we need to reject anything that comes between us and god joshua challenged the israelites he said you can't truly serve god if you're serving those idols in order for you to truly serve god you have to reject anything that is hindering you from being completely committed to God. We need to recommit ourselves. Now is the time for us to make a decision for ourselves, for our households. We need to decide who we're going to serve. It's a very well-known verse, the verse that we read just now. Joshua said to the Israelites, some of who were lying to him about their service to God, he said, choose for yourself this day who you will serve. But as for me and my house, what does he say next? We will serve the Lord. Our recommitment is not just something that we do after we have a mistake. We recommit every day. That's why we have devotions. That's why we have a reading plan. That's why we have church. Our recommitment to God is something that we as human beings who tend to make mistakes, who tend to say the wrong things and feel the wrong things. It's our ability to remember His forgiveness and present ourselves to Him again. What else do we do? We retell. We retell the good things that God has done for us to our friends, to our neighbors, to everyone who doesn't know. We can tell others of the goodness of God and the great things He has done. Just as the first islander Christians became missionaries, we have the opportunity to take on the mission ourselves. Turn to the person next to you and say, look what the Lord has done. And then the person next to you, if they don't know God, they'll probably say, what has He done? Right? At the end of the story, Joshua used a rock as a witness to Israel's recommitment to God. We have more than rocks. We have each other. Our relationship with each other in the church is what can help us remain strong. That, that's what can help us revive a revival culture in our generation. From that story, what can we learn? We can learn to recognize the good things God has done. To remember them, commit them to our memory. Reject anything that comes between us and our relationship with God. We can recommit ourselves daily, monthly, mo momentarily, but longer than a moment, you know. And also we can relate ourselves to others. Because the strongest culture that we need in this world right now is a culture that goes beyond blood, beyond race. It's a revival culture. It's God's kingdom culture. So I hope I bless you today by sharing that from the word. Joshua chapter 24. Read it for yourselves. We still have food to come. So don't leave just yet. I'm going to invite my dad up and he's going to share the next part of our service. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. It's not an accident you're here. You have a purpose. God has a plan, right? And we're here because of His plan. So, you have enough? You hear enough? I'm not going to preach again. I'm only here to say is, um, if your heart is stirred by what Sieni was telling, guess what? 
angels in heaven having a body right now like you like you and me doing right now amen um just touch up what Sieni was telling in Papua New Guinea because the end didn't stop there when she came back and all her uncles and aunties heard about him went there her went there and they find out those missionaries were killed there never returned home is a fifth generation to Sienis. her name was Sieni and Sieni was a blood to those people and that was excited you know in the fifth generations another girl went there in the same village where her ancestors were killed so that's very good so today i won't go to the food because if you are full of the spiritual food let's declare it um pastors and here will be love to pray for you continuously so that you have that feeling that good feeling of serving god amen so give your um god a big clap from you today amen and like i said we're not gonna finish here there is more exciting items here's to come before we get to the food let's invite this um young children born again children to come and show you what they do best god bless you all amen Oh, hi guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is not planned, but okay. I'm Samson in Samoan. I'm Samasoni, yeah, Samasoni earlier. And yeah, I was born in Samoa. And with this item we're gonna do is um, one of the um, traditional dance that we normally do in Samoa. We sit down and we clap a lot. So just. <laughs> <laughs> So if you feel like clapping, you can follow us, yeah? Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs>
food it's coming it's coming okay so honestly that was the end that was our ending did you guys enjoy it yeah a big clap for all those who participated some of them are cousins some of them are friends in Island of culture we're all family we're all brothers and sisters so before we close I just like to thank some really really important people and first of all we've got the sound people back there Wally Cameron Brant Joel Sienny 
They were really big help, especially having like a billion people on stage. It really helps to have a good sound person that can organize that. We've got lots of people who cooked. So there are people in the kitchen right now who are organizing that for you. And I'll tell you more about that later. We've got all the people who were on stage and did items for you. They really worked hard to make it all flow and uh, not just have a great night, but for you guys to learn more about our culture and more about God, which is pretty much the most important thing. Let me remind you that if you feel like you want to talk to someone, there are pastors here, there are leaders here, they are around. They're probably the ones who are talking to everyone. You'll see them, you'll spot them. But if you need to know who they are, then come and talk to me or my dad, who you probably know, yeah? I think I'm here by myself, yeah? Everyone say, Dalofa! That's the only one I'm going to say now, okay. So just before I get past the field to close in prayer, I've just got an awesome announcement. So tonight's food is brought to you by New Zealand. Aotearoa. So we've had an awesome family get together and they've um, done a hangi. I'm saying hangi. And a hangi is, I have my notes here. A feast cooked within an earth oven for several hours. So they dug a hole, they put the food in, and they cooked it in there. Stones are heated in embers, embers of a fire placed within a pit along with wet sacking, which food is then prepared and placed on top and covered with earth to trap the heat. How cool is that? So it's like an island of barbecue, but better, okay, but a lot better. So, guys, think about it. Last night was awesome weather, it was nice and sunny, cool breeze, how great was it? No, it wasn't. These guys are up last night prepping your food. They were up early this morning, putting the stuff in the hole and turning on the fire, even though it was raining all day today, all day yesterday. Give them a big clap. So not only do you get to experience our island culture and how we worship in the church, you get to experience how our island culture and how we eat. So why don't we get past the field to come up and say a prayer and I will lead you to the food in about two minutes. So it's going to be great fun. Okay, test time. I want to hear the three F's. What's the three F's? The first F is? Second one is? Third one is? You all got the third one pretty well, okay. Now let's test you out. How'd you go with Sienny's six R's? Let's go with the last one anyway. What's the last one? Revival. And that's what I want us to be living in all the time. See, I just got so stirred in my heart to see those missionaries gave themselves. Do you know what? We can be missionaries today. We can be missionaries today. We can give ourselves. So, Father, we thank you that indeed you gave yourself through Jesus to us. And so as we've been able to experience a difference of culture... Really what we are doing is we're experiencing your culture of life giving to us. So as we take this time now to share and enjoy in the food and the fellowship, one thing we want to do is say, Lord, let us take this and make it part of us, that we'll live in revival culture, that we'll truly show who we are as sons and daughters of the living God in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Bless you all. Awesome. What's your dad's title? What's my dad's title? My dad is a Makai, by the way, which is a chief, a Samoan chief, and his title is Tupola, which is a really good one because I've heard some really funny ones. In English, Tupola means, well, you can split it into Tupu means king and Ola means life, like live. Yeah? Is that right? Wow, I'm Samoan, guys. Anyways, the important stuff. We've got food out the back there. And we're going to have food out there and everywhere. So go and mingle. Have some fun. Our team will come up and play some music if you're still in the island field. But otherwise, enjoy. You can eat in here. You can eat out there. Be mindful of each other and eat lots. Just one distraction. If you do need prayer, I'll be waiting for you here. And also there's somebody already asked me for prayer. So... Um, when you, we're going to food, go quietly and leave some peace for here. For some people, need prayer in the floor. It's open for that kind of thing. Amen? God bless you. I have nothing else to say unless you want to keep hearing, to, hearing me talk. 
Thank you, Jesus, for the beautiful food that we're going to eat. Please bless all those who are going to eat and all those who are cooking. 